So I met Ade Jean Baptiste three years ago when um, they were thinking about coming to Alfred. And one of the main concerns about rural, um, predominantly white campuses is making sure that we have role models, making sure that we have connectable faculty. So this idea has been simmering since the, the very first day I met Ade. Ade came to me about a year ago and talked about really the need and um, her desire to have mentors of color in the studio and how in, in the glass world she was not seeing representation of artists who look like her. She went to Chicago and, and involved herself with Project Fire where she met many of these artists and started pitching this idea originally to be professionals as well as students coming to Alfred and really changing the landscape and change, changing the conversations that we um, have about being an artist and being underrepresented and marginalized. And there's, there's powerful dialogues going on behind the scenes as well as what the students are lucky enough to, to be invited to participate in. Um, so I am Dr. Brian Saltzman. I'm the Director for Student Diversity and Inclusion, the Interim Chief Diversity Officer, and the Director and Co-Director of the Africana Studies Program here at Alfred University. I think that the work of someone like Cedric brings so much because you see not only the entrepreneurial spirit, but the actual strength of professionalism. So, so the idea that the Black Lives Artist Series as a tradition and the students and those individuals who get, had an opportunity to see his work, to see how he brought from concept all the way to production and then his talk gives us just another opportunity to be inclusive, to be open, to do the work of not just merely being members of a global society, but ultimately contributing in meaningful and transformative ways. I'm Cedric Mitchell. I'm a glass artist based out of Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the name of my company is Cedric Mitchell Design. So my introduction was probably different from a lot of people. I mean, before I was uh, blowing glass, I was actually doing music. So I was like a rap artist in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I went by the name of Nuff Said. So um, one day, Actually, my boy Steve, um, who owned the, the studio that we were in recording music, um, was telling me about his friend in Miami who actually made glass. And he was telling me about the community college. I was at Tulsa Community College, and I told him I was already enrolled as a business major. So he was telling me that I could take glass blowing as an elective there. So like without even like knowing what glass blowing was or anything like that, um, I just like took a leap. I mean, it was a long, uh, a long journey, you know, like 
it was a lot of a lot of hiccups in the road, you know, um, legal troubles, you know, just getting out of an old lifestyle that I was living before. I was actually blowing glass, um, so you know. But I was actually in the mind state of like, you know, the humble apprentice. So like coming in the studio, sweeping the studio. So just like really just going hard at that and volunteering my time and showing up to the studio and being in there like a staple in the studio to the point they were like, no, you want a job? It was like two weeks in the glass blowing when I first started and I was like, oh man, let me, let me find, let me Google famous black glass artists. So I like Google famous black glass artists and I'm like, oh yeah, let's see what we got. And it like, took me a minute to find them. You know, and then the, the results that popped up was Thurman Statham, um, Deborah Moore, and Shay Rhodes. You know, so, you know, knowing that there was only three, it's like, all right, cool. It solidified my role, you know, in Glass. Like, all right, cool. You know, you know, rapping is something anyone can do. There's a lot of rappers out there, but everybody can blow Glass, you know? So this is like my own lane and my own opportunity to actually expand that and actually be a reference point for the next generation to come. So, I mean, and I, I, you know, I thought I was one of the few. And then I actually at the gas conference in Chicago, that's when I met uh, Corey Pemberton and we were actually assisting Joe Cariotti with his demo. And he like leaned over to me. He was like, you know, this is like a rare moment right here or you got two brothers on the floor. And I was like, yeah, it is, you know, and really I didn't, I didn't think it would come full circle, but you know, years later, um, Corey was leaving Penland and actually looking to move to LA to start like a painting career. So we ended up working for Joe Cariotti and we all ended up working together. So like, that was like a, a monumental thing right there um, for us and then, you know, for him to actually have started crafting the future with Annie Evelyn and to see it grow and have my participation in it. So that way we could actually diversify the fields of art, craft and design. And then we can see more of what we didn't have, you know, when we first started out. So to see like more people of color working in glass and then, you know, working in ceramics or metal smithing uh, and, and, and woodworking, making furniture and, and all kind of other crafts. When a day first reached out, I think it was like a year ago, when she sent like a DM, um, you know, pitching an idea to me. And, you know, I, I just said, yeah, immediately. Like, yes, whatever you need, let me know what you need and buy when, you know, because sometimes I'm, I'm, I get in the midst of like doing a lot of things and it came full circle where we all met on Zoom um, with me, Sarah Beth, Nikosi, um, and we all met about the, the Big Gas series. Um, and, you know, I didn't really know what it in, included or what to expect from it, you know, until I arrived here. And I was like, man, this is like real powerful. Like in the facilities here, Alfred, you know, like you could do pretty much anything here. The students have been amazing. Like they made life easy, like super easy, you know. It's, and it's, it was, you know, my idea coming into it was like to include everybody, you know, like um, all hands on board. So like first day, you know, I was like, all right, cool. I'm, we're gonna do some prep work. We'll make these things. I'll be on this bench working with this person and then you be over there and you'll make a part and we'll make a part and we'll join them together and that's kind of how like the whole week has been you know just um stress-free and like me not worried about or micromanaging anyone just like hey just just do it and we'll figure it out and then you know everybody has skills so like it's been good i've never experienced that i'm used to like doing a lot of the work so being able to like you know, take a pause or not have to think as much, you know, just being able to assign jobs and then bring it all together and create some really nice um, nice work has been a, like a joy actually.
You gotta, you gotta do things to discover things. So like, if you're not actively like doing things or like putting out the effort to do it, or like sometimes you get into your mind, like I can't do it because of the money, you know, you have to actually know that the money is out there. There's grants for these things. You can apply for these grants, there's support. Um, and then even like Craft in the Future, we're trying to provide that support as well for people to take, you know, those opportunities you know, and I always mention like, you know, some of the opportunities um, don't seem like an opportunity when you when you think about them. Everything feels risky and trying new things. Uh, so just, you know, taking those leaps of faith and just knowing that you're gonna land on your feet.